Hello and welcome to this uh, sort of informal conversation uh, between NSC Career Services and the Opportunity Village. Um, we're really excited to talk to Adam today. He's here representing the AmeriCorps program and he's going to talk a little bit more about that. So Adam, why don't you go ahead and just introduce yourself, give us your title, and we'll go from there. Okay, great. Um, my name is Adam Snow, like you said, and I'm the AmeriCorps program manager at Opportunity Village. All right, perfect. So can you tell us a little bit about Opportunity Village and the mission of the organization? Yeah, so um, if you've been in Vegas for a while or even just a few months, you've probably heard of an event that we host. A lot of people are familiar with the Magical Forest, which is a big fundraiser that we host every year to raise funds. But uh, a lot of people aren't aware of what those funds are being raised for. Uh, OV is actually a very, very large nonprofit. We have around 700 employees and we serve around 2000 people a year. Um, and our mission is just serving people with intellectual disabilities, uh, mainly adults. And we do that with a variety of programs. We have um, vocational education programs, we have rehabilitation, we have arts programs, so music, theater, drawing, things like that. Uh, we also have community employment programs. So in addition to the five campuses we have around the city, which are quite large and house a lot of these programs, we have dozens of community employment sites where the individuals we serve can go out into the community and work with businesses and other organizations that we partner with for on-the-job training. Awesome. So how did you come to work for Opportunity Village? And can you talk a little bit about um, sort of the path you took to get to where you are now? Yeah, so I, um, I was born and raised in Las Vegas, actually. Uh, and I graduated from college here in 2014. Shortly after that, I left and joined the Peace Corps um, I served first in Kosovo for a couple of years, and then I came back for a little bit and realized I wasn't quite ready to do a, a real job for a little bit. So I joined again and uh, served this time in Liberia and West Africa. And it really made me fall in love with the kind of service model for having that be my job. I just really like the actual serving something else or serving a mission and not just the profit. So when I came back from Liberia, I started looking only for work um, in nonprofits and kind of government work overseas and domestic. And I lucked out because I, like I said in the beginning, I knew about the Magical Forest because I'd been there as a kid growing up, but I had no idea that OV was a place that was actually a nonprofit at all, much less a nonprofit that serves people and serves people with disabilities. So I happened to see a job that lined up with my skills a couple of years ago, applied to that, was lucky enough to get it. And then while I was at OV, about nine months into that, the AmeriCorps um, program was sort of being developed and they hired me to help plan it out and design it. And then it just launched a couple of months ago. So it's been a pretty nice journey, but it's all been in the name of service-based sort of jobs and, and missions. Awesome, and just out of curiosity, um, what was your major in college? And did you go to UNLV, I'm guessing? I did, I went to UNLV and I uh, studied English literature, which, um, was a, a fun degree and it was it was good to study and I enjoy English, but it wasn't the most useful. So that's, I think, another reason why I uh, joined the Peace Corps as well, because I viewed it as kind of like a grad school uh, kind of real world experience for that kind of nonprofit and development work. Um, but actually, maybe because you said you just started there very recently in Nevada State College, but I also went to high school part at Valley High School, but then I went to Nevada State High School for two years at the end of high school, which I think is run by Nevada State College because we had some classes on your campus there. So I have direct experience with uh, Nevada State College 10 years ago now. Awesome. Um, and for the record, I was also an English major. So yeah. I empathize with the struggles of uh, finding work after graduating with a um, liberal arts degree. So yeah. it's cool to have someone who can sort of share your own pathway there. Um, so let's go ahead and talk about um, what sort of positions you're offering students um, and a little bit about the AmeriCorps program. So this is gonna be a big answer. Um, we, uh, yeah, I'm gonna to try to keep it mentally in check. So first, it's a two part question, what positions we're offering and then about the AmeriCorps program. I'm gonna start with the back of that and talk about the AmeriCorps program a bit. Okay. Um, some people are familiar with AmeriCorps and some people aren't. I'm gonna give just kind of a brief overview and then if this kind of piques your interest, you can go Google the rest. There's a lot of great resources on AmeriCorps uh, online. But AmeriCorps is similar to Peace Corps. It's just more domestic. So it's about uh, signing up for a service opportunity, which is a defined amount of time. 
Some AmeriCorps service opportunities are three months long or six months long or a year long, um, but you sign up with a firm beginning and end date. And in that period, you have to serve a set number of hours that you agree to beforehand. And that always kind of averages out to a certain weekly schedule. So these service-based jobs, and you can see this on the AmeriCorps site, they serve a lot of different um, needs that a community might have. The specific one that we are using the AmeriCorps program for is economic opportunity because the AmeriCorps program at OV is all about uh, vocational training for the individuals we serve that have intellectual disabilities. So we've identified a kind of gap where we have a lot of people on campus-based programs and there's not really an effective funnel for some of them to learn job-related skills and knowledge and then start to maybe feel comfortable about pursuing a job out in the community because that's ultimately our goal as an organization. So that was kind of the, the seed for this program uh, and, and reaching out to AmeriCorps and seeing if we could partner and kind of get their funding. Uh, if you come to OV as an AmeriCorps member, uh, it's kind of in the middle uh, of the Venn diagram. It's like an internship and a volunteer opportunity and a job. And then in the middle of that is AmeriCorps member. So it's not the same thing for everyone. It depends on what you're looking for in life. That's gonna change what you get out of an AmeriCorps service opportunity. Some people are really into the internship kind of aspect of it because it's a chance to get really uh, a hands-on experience and kind of unprecedented experience, especially you're just injected into the middle of it. So if you're looking for professional opportunities down the line, this AmeriCorps position is perfect. Uh, if you're looking for money, it's hard times right now. And if you're also having to consider that, AmeriCorps positions do offer a living stipend as well. So it's not the most competitive. You're not going to be making more money than you might at a job somewhere else, but it is intended to kind of offset some of the costs that come with donating your time and doing service every every week for this uh, for this cause. And then it's volunteer in that, it, one, it's not a lot of money, and two, you're serving something else and you're always kind of keeping in the back of your mind that you're giving your time to this thing. So I mentioned that the AmeriCorps program at OV is about vocational education. So the position we're offering is called education specialist. And it's for someone who is one, interested in serving others and kind and just willing to go the extra mile for someone else. Uh, ideally, it would maybe be someone with experience uh, in education, maybe studying education now or special education since that's exactly the kind of work we're doing. And it's someone that is also willing to work for the defined period that we've set. So this listing opportunity is gonna start tentatively March 8th it might shift uh, a week or two north or south of that, but it's gonna be March 8th and it's gonna end in mid to late August. So it's just over five months of service. Uh, for that, you're gonna get a living stipend of about $3,800. That's gonna be dispersed in uh, every two weeks. Um, and then if you complete your AmeriCorps service, you also unlock an education award, which is about $1,600 for this position. And that education award is something that you can use on past education expenses, present ones or future ones down the line because you have up to seven years to spend that $1,600. So if you're studying and you're in school, which in this case, the people watching this video are, AmeriCorps to me is a very competitive thing because the value of that education award kind of ups the value overall when you mix in the living stipend as well. Um, because you're presumably already spending some money on education, so this can help offset that. Uh, the positions are offered at two of our campuses, and all of this is going to be online, so you can look and see where our campuses are located, but it's going to be our Oki and Buffalo campus. We have two shifts, one in the morning and one in the afternoon. The morning shift is going to be from 7.30 to 12.30, four days a week. The afternoon one is going to be from 12.30 to 5.30, four days a week. And we can work with you to figure out what that fifth day off is going to look like, but that's a standardized kind of schedule for all AmeriCorps members. Um, I don't think I, I left anything off the table there, did I? Cover compensation, dates, it's March to August, and kind of who we're looking for a little bit. So all good to me. <laughs> I don't think that there's anything missing. Um, uh, so what do you look for in a candidate for this position? So when you're hiring, who do you look for? So, I mean, at the core of it is someone who uh, is nice, like, and that sounds kind of simplistic, but for a service-based opportunity, we really want someone who's willing to serve other people and who is aligned with Opportunity Village's mission of serving intellectual, uh, individuals with intellectual disabilities. So, one, the core thing is someone who's willing to go the extra mile and is genuinely kind. So, if you have that and this position sounds good to you, I encourage you to apply. 
um, something that could make you more competitive um, and something that could be assistive to us is if, like I said in the beginning, you're currently studying education, you have experience with individuals with uh, intellectual disabilities, you're studying special education, those sorts of things, because this opportunity is titled education specialist because everything you're doing has to do with education. You're facilitating classes for the individuals we serve and you're writing and developing lesson plans for the people we serve as well. So those are the two sorts of things that we're looking for. Someone who is kind and selfless and aligned with our mission and someone who is ideally studying education as well. Okay, awesome. Um, so basically, how do you apply for this? Um, where do they go? Um, if, you, if you know the link, otherwise the link will be on the page where this video lives, but um, if, if, you, if you do have that, that would be great. And then um, I don't think you mentioned if there's an application deadline. So that would be my other question. Good, good one, thank you for that. Uh, so like I said, we are targeting an orientation date of March 8th and AmeriCorps is different in, uh, in that it's a set beginning and a set end date. So we're kind of held to a certain timeline because we've identified March 8th as our start date. And AmeriCorps has sometimes a lengthy background check process and just application process that we have to go through. So I'd say the application deadline to make sure that we're not getting it too close would be February 15th, February 16th, somewhere around there in about the mid-February area. Once we start getting closer to the end of February, it's still possible, but um, it's kind of more dependent on how quickly the if you're interested, please apply as soon as possible because we only have 11 slots open spread out across the two campuses, across the two shifts at each one. But also, once you kind of cross that threshold in February, we're probably not going to be able to get you in. Okay, perfect. Um, so we have a little bit of extra time, so I'll go ahead and ask my little bonus question I had. Um, it's just basically a general question. Um, it's just, what is a piece of career or life advice you wish someone had given you when you were a student? Mm. And actually, uh, so a quick note, I also forgot to mention where sure. they apply, uh, and that is on our website. If you go to opportunityvillage.org, you'll see a careers tab in the top right of the screen. You're going to click that. You can see I'm an applicant from outside of the organization. Click that. It'll take you to our listing. And again, it's titled Education Specialist. It's going to have AmeriCorps member in parentheses next to that. And then because we're targeting specific shifts and locations, you can choose, oh, I want to work at Oki campus in the morning. You would apply for that listing. If you want to work at Buffalo campus in the afternoon, you apply for that listing. And inside of each listing is a generalized overview of everything we've been talking about so they can read more about where those campuses are and things like that. But it's going to live on the Opportunity Village webpage. Uh, advice that I wish I had received. Um, I recently only learned like a year or two ago the value of when I'm applying for jobs. Uh, especially stuff that I have now identified as my career or things that I really want to really want to do is following up my application with contacting further. Um, when I first got out of Peace Corps in between my two uh, Peace Corps services, I applied to a lot of things and I just shot it out and just sent, you know, a resume, sent a quick cover letter that I had, you know, kind of that template of just swap a couple of words and then send it to the, send it to the place and then I wouldn't hear back at all. And then when I came back, I spoke to someone and kind of realized uh, the thing that sets you apart is actually reaching out, doing a follow-up call, follow-up email. That's what I did with the job I have now. I called OV multiple times until I could get in contact with their HR department. I spoke to the recruiter directly. Um, some people, we, we kind of launched this program already in September, this AmeriCorps program, so we have some members here. And now that I've been on the hiring side of it, I can double down and say that I really appreciated those people who reached out to me with direct questions, who made contact with me beforehand because it just helped elevate them a little bit out of the, the mess of applications that you can get. Because when you're just looking at names and kind of answers to the screeners and maybe results from their interview, it can be hard for something to really stand out. So I just, that would be my thing is always go that extra mile to try and connect with the hiring manager or HR if you don't know who that hiring manager is. Awesome, I think that's great advice. Um, the other thing I was going to mention about applying to the job, um, we're going to try to, um, we always try to make sure that anything that we're sort of promoting out, we also have on Handshake. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll talk about that in um, one way or another, it'll be on Handshake. If you're not able to post it, we'll post it ourselves. So also look, look it up on Handshake, everybody. Um, 
And then the final question that I have for you is just if they have additional questions, how can they reach you? So what's your uh, own contact information so they can get in touch with you? Yeah, so I would love if anyone reach out. I mean, obviously with my previous answer, please do reach out. But uh, my email would be the best way to do that. And that is snow a at opportunityvillage.org. So my last name is just snow, how it's spelled normally, S-N-O-W, the letter A at opportunityvillage.org. I'll get back to you ASAP. And then if we want to arrange a call or something like that, we can do that as well. Awesome. I'll also make sure that's probably right underneath the video. So it'll be right there where they can see it. All right. So that's pretty much all the time we had. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Um, please, students or alumni, if you have any questions, he wants to hear from you. So reach out. And then also, if you need help uh, preparing for the interview or anything like that, please talk to us at the Career Services Center. Um, there should be a button somewhere in your page to make an appointment with us, and we encourage you to do that. Um, so thank you so much, Adam. Thank you, Zach. I appreciate it.